Welcome, Norland United Methodist, to Norland United Methodist Church. We are so thankful that Jesus is always at the center of our lives. And I pray and hope that if Jesus is not at the center of your life today, that after this service, you will make him part of your life. It is so good to have you in the house, those who are in, in worship with us in the house, and those who are visiting with us are worshiping also with us online. If you're visiting with us for the first time, if you're in the house, could you raise your hand so we could give you a Norland welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Norland, those who are visiting in the house and those who are online. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please put in the chat that you are visiting and where you're visiting from and we will get back to you with all the information that you have given to us. I want to remind Norland members and friends, we are updating our database. If you have changed your email or your phone number, please make sure that you call our office at 305-652-5172 so we can update and you can obtain information. Yes, welcome again at Norland United Methodist Church on behalf of Reverend Margaret Cartway and the worship committee to our church. It is so good to have you here. We are located here at 885 Northwest 195th Street in the beautiful city of Miami Gardens. 
Let's hear about a few news that we have for this week. Oh, Bible study. If you have not joined our Bible study group, you are missing out because it is so good to come together and pray, not just for ourselves, but for the world to intercede. So join us every Wednesday to study the Word of God, and we're having wonderful study as each group is doing their presentation on Zoom. It's on Zoom. The information is on the screen. If you do not have the information and need more information, please call the office. And if you call the office and nobody answers, leave a message. We check our message daily. So join us on Wednesday at 12 noon for Bible study. And prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer changes all things. And so on Monday evening or at 9, at 9 p.m., we make sure it is at 9 p.m. so you can come from work and just settle in before you go to bed. 9 p.m. on our call-in number. You can also call the church office if you don't have that information. And we have upcoming events. I know we have our charge conference. It's very, very important. And this year, our charge conference will be November 7th. And it will be at 4.30 p.m. It's a Sunday afternoon on Zoom. The information will be sent um, in the future. And we're asking everyone to join in. It is your church, Norlan. Today is Laity Sunday. And we come together as a laity. And so this is your time to step forward and say, what can I do for my church? What am I doing for Norlan? What is God calling me? Don't point your finger and say the other person will do it. What did you say when you joined Norlan? That I will serve it with not just your gifts. What are your gifts? Are you giving God your gifts? So remember, charge conference, November 7th at 4.30 p.m. via Zoom. Thank you so much. Let us all stand now for the call to worship. We are all called to experience grace and share the gifts of life in Jesus. We, we gather to sing my souls to God. God. We remember the faith that lived in those who loved us. We know the Lord's song includes verses of grace we have yet to learn. In every scene of trauma, tragedy, and menace we discover Love already at work. And, and we join in a chorus where loneliness and captivity becomes healing and freedom. And now we'll have a presentation of our ministry before the prayer. You may be seated. As you know, today is Lady Sunday. And as the slide is getting ready to be prepared, let me just let you know that Lady Sunday represents or celebrate the ministry of all Christians to love God and neighbors. So today we lift up all our laity around the world. It's not just a Norlan, it's a Methodist all around the world that we celebrate with our laity. You see, Lady Sunday is a day set aside to remember that everyone is invited to embody God's restoration project of healing, of love, justice, and world repairs. This is observed on the third Sunday in October, and this year, today, October 17, 2021, we are observing Lady Sunday. In one way, we express the deep conviction that all are called to participate in God's mission 
and live this calling through the ministry of our church. Take a look. I don't know about you, but have you seen the pictures? They're ushers, they're greeters. There is the greeters, both women and men as greeters. There is the prayer group, there is the choir, there is Bible study, and there is the praise team and also the music ministers that are up here, the musicians. Thanks to you all, you make the service what it is. Those who read and participate. The outreach ministry. Those are ministries, some of the ministries of our church. We have dance ministry. We have exercise ministry. There's so much to get involved in. What is God calling you to get involved in today? What would you like to participate? The gifts doesn't mean just your money, but it means your time and it means your service. So wherever God is calling you to mission in our community or outside of the community, make a commitment to Norland United Methodist Church if you have not done so and be a part of God's calling. Amen. Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we hear you calling. Yes, Lord, we sometimes shy away from the calling. We give you thanks, almighty God, for bringing us together in service and on the virtual world. Where could that be happen if you have not given us that gift? Thank you, Lord, for opening our hearts, our minds, our soul for inspiring us when we don't even want to do it, when sometimes we don't feel inspired. We thank you for all the lay to this morning, Lord Jesus. We ask a special blessing upon those who are not able to be in service, who want to be in service, who want to come to church and cannot. And we talk about our elderly and shut in there, Jesus. Bless them wherever they are. A special blessing upon Jody and Christina. Thank God you brought Christina through that surgery last week, Lord. We ask you to be with Dawn and her mom this morning, Frances, as she had an accident and was taken to the hospital. But thank God you brought her through and she's home recuperating. Just be, we ask, Lord, to just give Dawn the strength. It's not easy when you have to take care of a loved one. We ask you for the Kellys, Lord, a special blessing upon them as their son and brother is not doing too well. So Lord, we ask you to put your loving arms around Norland United Methodist Church this morning. We ask you, God, to put a special blessing upon our pastor as she's now going through that mission that she has left to do. You know each and every one of our hearts, Lord, and sometimes it's so hard to open up to you. But sometimes you say, just be still and know that you are God all by yourself. So, Lord, today we just give everything to you and we just consecrate this service to you. Be with the one who will bring the message, dear Jesus. Bless everyone up here, the praise team and those who are in our congregation in a special way. We thank you and we praise you and we give you all the honor. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our first scripture lesson is taken from Job chapter 28, verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> The Lord speaks. 
Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens my counsel without words, without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me, if you understand. Who marks it off its dimensions? Surely you know. What stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footing set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sung together and all the angels shouted with joy? Here ended the word of God. Thanks be to God. It's time to praise the Lord, everyone. Let's all stand if you are able, because it's a new day. God has given us a blessing this day. He has made sure that we woke up in our right mind. All right? So, how great, how great is the God that we serve. Join us if you can.
how great Amen. is our God. If that has not touched you this morning, I don't know what. But because of who he is, we have to give him the glory because he's the great God Almighty. The God of all the earth. So because of who you are, we're giving him glory this morning. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are.
Amen, church family. Amen. Today's scripture reading will be taken from Mark 10, verses 35 to 45. This is a request from, of James and John. Then James and John, sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink of the cup I drink or be baptized with the, bapti with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink of the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left, it is not for me to grant. These places belong to those whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they began to be indignant. James and John. Jesus called them together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles, Lord it over them, and they are officials, exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whosoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whosoever wants to be the first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand and join us in the hymn of preparation. You may stand and join us. Till I 
Amen. Amen. Breathe on me, Father. Breathe on us, precious God. Make us fully yours. Until we love all that you love. And that we do what you have called us to do. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity this morning to stand here in worship. Father God, thank you for your presence. And thank you for the fellowship, Father God. Because, Father God, we know there are so many things this week that has threatened to take us out. That has attempted and has made it known to us, Lord, that the enemy is like a roaring lion, Father God, seeking whom he may devour. But Father God, yet and still your word tells us that no weapons formed against us, Lord, shall prosper. Amen. So Father God, thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. Thank you for the opportunity, Father God, to just experience your presence. Thank you for the opportunity that we have breath in our bodies this morning, Father God, because there are so many others who do not. Thank you for the opportunity to be standing here under our own strengths or to be sitting at home wherever we are. The fact that we can see and hear is a blessing from you, Father God. Father God, for those who are sick and in need of healing, we lift them to you this morning. Take control. Take control, Father. Diminish whatever is not of you. Till all that we can see is your reflection in us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. I thank God for the opportunity to stand here this morning. And I thank Pastor Margaret and the laity for allowing me this privilege to bring this message to you this morning. You know, for me, it's God's timing never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> You know, he puts things in place sometimes so far in advance. Yes. And we don't even know why or what until it unfolds before you in such a way that <laughs> there is no denying that God is in control. Mm -hmm. Last week, we had a sermon from Pastor Reuben that spoke about 2,500 years ago in history and all the dynasties and the kingdoms that were put in place. And as we watched as he peeled the layers back and watched as history unfolded, I stand in awe that the Bible could have predicted it 2,500 years ago. Amen. And we watch it take place today. Mm -hmm. And there are people who still believe that the Bible is irrelevant. As I read and reread the scripture that you heard Miss Ford read this morning, Mark chapter 10, 35 through 45, I was also reminded that there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Every experience that we're having today were experiences, as we can tell from the Bible stories, that have been happening from the beginning of time. Yes. These are lessons 
that were set before us. And I find it unfortunate that generations, thousands of years later, we haven't learned much here. We are still repeating the same patterns. So today we're going to take some time and we're going to stick with just that passage. Mark chapter 10, 35 through 45. And beginning in verse 35, we see James and John, the sons of Zebedee, right? We know that they were two of Jesus' trusted friends. So, we know that they were approaching him without reservation, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't scared. They weren't trembling as they walked up to Jesus. They were bold, very bold, mm -hmm. as they declared to him, we want you to do whatever we ask. It wasn't a question of God, what, what God wanted from them. It wasn't a question of, you know, God, you know, I have a, I have a, um, a request here, you know, do you see fit to grant it? No, they were very bold. I want you to do whatever we ask. So that tells me that there was some familiarity with Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. There had to be some sort of relationship, some sort of friendship that allowed them that latitude to be able to approach him in such a way, telling him, listen, my friend, I want you to do what I want you to do, mm -hmm. right? There had to be some relationship there. But then they went even further. Yeah. Well, Jesus, we want to sit on your right and on your left, yeah. right? And if we look back at the time in history, they were expecting a king, a ruler, not a savior. Mm -hmm. So everything that Jesus has been going through, all the work that he's been doing with them, all the preaching and everything that he has been doing, they assumed it was leading up to some sort of kingship. Mm -hmm. And they felt they were entitled to sit on his right and his left. But as we research who James and John was, we shouldn't have been surprised, right? <laughs> because Jesus nicknamed them the sons of thunder. They were bold. They were fiery. They were in the mix. They were fervent for everything that Jesus taught. They were the go-getters. So I guess they thought, hey, Jesus, we've been this to you. We've always been there. We've always supported you. We have always looked out for you. So, hey, we deserve that place. <laughs> We deserve to be standing next to you on your right and your left when you take that kingdom because we're going to fight for you, right? At least that's how I kind of see it. That's how I kind of interpret them considering who they are. But again, what if we're looking at it from a different angle? We know that they were zealous for Jesus, mm -hmm. that they were a strong protector of him, that they were strong supporters of him. So what if their request was simply, hey, Jesus, I'm your backup guy, <laughs> right? You're going to be in power. You're going to need some protection. We've got you. Right and left, we've got you. Many ways to look at it. We weren't there, so we can't predict in how it is approached. We can only follow what the story tells us. But Jesus, as usual, he answers their question with his own question. 
do you know what you are asking? <laughs> do you know what you are asking? How many times do we get on our knees and beg, Jesus, only if. Mm -hmm. Jesus, please, I need. Jesus, please, I want. God, if only I had. If only we knew the damage we would have done if he had said yes. Mm -hmm. But Jesus goes on to ask them, can you drink the cup? that I drink hmm. or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Yeah. They don't have a clue what was coming. Mm -hmm. Jesus kept telling them that he was here to lay down his life. Hmm. But somewhere, somehow, just like today, they didn't get that message. They didn't realize that what they were asking came with great sacrifice. Amen. But again, those quick, impetuous boys, oh yeah, we can. We can. Mm -hmm. And I can just imagine them. They didn't stop. They didn't think about it. They just responded because they were that certain of themselves that they could do and they could walk the walk that Jesus was about to take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but still, Jesus said, okay. <laughs> okay, that's what you want. No problem. You're going to walk the walk. You're going to drink the, the cup. cup. Amen. But I can't give you a space beside me. Because that is not my place to give. Many of us, like James and John, have great ideas. We want to start ministries. We come in with zeal and fervor and fire full of ideas, full of understanding what we want to accomplish. We strive for prominence. And we strive for titles. Mm -hmm. But when the work gets hard, we fall away hmm. because it is not what we thought it was going to be like. We didn't see the challenges in the beginning, so we didn't have the fortitude to see it through to the end. But Jesus puts his own perspective on things for them. He said to them, I don't have the ability. I, Jesus, even the Jesus in all his power, did not have the ability to grant them what they asked. He says, those seats or places that I've earned, mm -hmm. not given. So now you can imagine the situation with Jesus and the 12 disciples, right? Jesus just turned them down, so I'm sure they weren't exactly happy. And all the other 10 are now upset because how dare you ask? Do you think you are better than us? Do you think you deserve a place of honor more than us? So you start hearing all the gro um, the griping and the complaining mm -hmm. and there is dissension in the camp. Hmm. And as usual, Jesus just took it as a teaching moment and gathered them all up together and said, <laughs> come here. Look around you. All of these present day leaders, they're not using their powers to help anyone but themselves. Mm -hmm. Because rulers and people in power lord it over the people that serve them. Mm -hmm. This was 2,000 years ago. Hmm. Any similarities in your lives today? Amen. Hmm. 
then Jesus gave them the ultimate lesson. <laughs> Whoever of you want to be great, you must first, first be slave to all. If you want to sit in the seat of greatness, if you want power and might, mm -hmm. you must first learn to be slave to all. Mm -hmm. Now, is Jesus asking us to be literal slaves? That's not what he's asking. What he is saying is simple. It's a very simple lesson, right? Some of the greatest leaders, they are great because they know their business from the bottom up. They have worked in every capacity, from the person who cleans the toilet to the CEO. Amen. So they know and they understand what everything entails so that they have a clear understanding of how to lead those they want to follow. Servanthood is not about position. It's not about your skills. Mm -hmm. It is an attitude that great leaders look for a way that they can help to add value to other people. Mm -hmm. All right? Because God tells us, I, I, the Lord God, didn't come into this world to be served, but he came to be a ransom for all of us, mm -hmm. right? Irregardless of who we are, irregardless of what position we hold, irregardless of how puffed up we think we are, mm. it is only by the sacrifice and the blood shed by Jesus that we are redeemed and made whole. So the kingdom of God, what would it look like for us? God is asking us to love each other. It is the extent in which we serve each other, that we give of ourselves, that we start becoming leaders. We teach people that if I can do this, you can do it for someone else. Amen. As a Christ-following servant, we must be motivated to serve by love. Jesus' love for us is unwavering, unconditional, undeserving. And he asked us to be exactly the same for others. Remember in Mark 13, they came together for the final meal, right? Mm -hmm. The Last Supper. And what you may not know, as the Bible doesn't always give you every single bit of detail, was that they forgot to hire someone to wash feet, mm -hmm. because that was a tradition, right? That tradition came that people are coming in, they're weary, their feet are dusty, so they usually hire a servant to wash the feet of the invited guests. When the disciples looked around that room, they had forgotten to get someone to do that task. <laughs> Jesus realizing there was no one there to do the task. Stripped down, prepared himself just like a servant would, and then washed each of their feet. None of them saw the need, nor thought that it was possible to say, hey, let me do the task. It took Jesus as the leader 
to show them this is no menial task for me. I serve you so you can serve others. As Christians, I would love to say that we don't care about what, what others think about us. <laughs> but unfortunately, we do. And we care a little bit too much mm -hmm. about what other people think about that, about us. The only question we should be asking ourselves is what just Jesus think about us? What does he think about us? When we're passing that person on the street who is in need of help and nobody is there to see us, what do you do? When you're in your homes and doing what we're not supposed to do, well, nobody is seeing us, so it's okay. Right? Jesus sees and knows everything. Amen. So we have the ability to look around us and see the needs of others. COVID-19 has given us a unique opportunity. A lot of people have used it to hide themselves because they're afraid. And you know what? I understand being afraid. I too was afraid at the beginning. But we have been given guidelines on how to take care of ourselves so that we don't have to hide away and not do the job that God has called us to do. At the end of the day, you can sit from the comfort of your house and make a phone call and pray with somebody who is in need of prayer. If you have the ability to teach, there are a lot of students who are stuck at home who are not really grasping the concepts because they have lost so much time in school that you could reach out to them and help a child who's in need of help. There are those of us who have the ability to move around and we have neighbors who are not. What about finding out from that neighbor what their need is Right? I'm going to the supermarket. Is there something you need that I can pick up for you? Mm -hmm. All of that is service. No one has to notice us or recognize us to be in service to God. Amen. You know, as I thought about it, I said, James and John asked the wrong question. They asked the wrong question. And most of us today ask the wrong question mm -hmm. as well. The question instead should have been, how can I be your right and your left hand? Amen. That is the question that they should have asked. Great leaders learn that they lead only because people are willing to follow. Amen. You can have all the title in the world. You can laud things over people and try to pull them to do what you have asked or requested. But until they trust you enough to follow, you are not leading anybody. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to ask you today, what is it that you find that you could do that you are not doing to serve those around you? And we're asking, I'm asking myself the same question because we get so caught up in our own lives and what we need to do and what we want and what we should be doing. Remember, serving is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's not I'm going to do it with the time that I have left over. And I'm speaking to myself as well. Mm -hmm. 
We need to plan it just like we plan everything else until it becomes such a habit that we do it without thinking about it. So I challenge you today, be Jesus's right hand and his left hand. Because I promise that you will emerge the leader that God has called you to be. Whether you are following or leading a large or small group, anything you do for Jesus will not go unnoticed. So be his right and his left hand. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we say thank you for the support that we get online, that we get in person, that is mailed in. Because it is your gifts, your tithes, and your offering that keeps this ministry going. So we say thank you. And as we look at this Laity Sunday, and Claudette so eloquently put it earlier, we could not do what we do, not only with our immediate New Orleans family, but with the larger family that has been formed because of the ability to be online. So we thank each and every one of you for being present, for always being available to answer the needs when we put it out there. All that you do for Jesus does not go unnoticed. So Father God, we thank you. Thank you for this tithes and thank you for these offerings. Father God, we know that you will use it according to your will and your purpose. Father God, we know that you will multiply it and do with it whatever you will because it comes from a generous heart. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your love. Bless the hands that gave and those who were unable to give, Lord. In Jesus' name. grace of our Lord and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Stand with us as we sing our closing hymn, In Christ Alone, My Hope is Found. Know that God is the only one that you can put your trust in. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. So hold on to God's unchanging hands. Christ alone. 
Blessed week, everyone.